Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy, coming to today to talk to you about a continuation of what we discussed last Sunday. Last Sunday, we discussed that so you thought you were ready to go camping. Now, you have your trailer, you're at the campground, and what you're supposed to be doing. Now, before I touch base on this stuff and go over this, I want to let you know today is going to be the first day I have a giveaway. Now, so you're going to have to stay tuned. I'm going to go over the details of those giveaways at the end of my video. So, but let's get on to when you're at your uh, campsite. So, well, we're going to pretend that this is your campsite and you're backed into it. So, let's start. So, probably one of the most important things you're going to want to do is before you disconnect from your tow vehicle, there's a couple things you need to make sure you have right. One, you want to make sure that you're level side to side. Now, what you do in order to level it side to side is you're going to have to put something under the tires. Whether you get the blocks that you put together or whether you get 2x12s and run your tires over that. So that's the first most important thing you do. Now, at the same time, what you want to make sure you're doing is you want to make sure that you're close enough to the connections. Now, what am I talking about? On this particular one, we're in good shape. The electrical connector or your electrical cord is back here. So when you pull this out, I've got the electrical uh, connection back here. You have a 25 foot cord for most of you. Some of you might have a 30. So you want to make sure you're close enough to your connections, meaning your sewer, your cable, your water, and your electrical cord. Now for some, if for some of you, if, if in fact you can't get close enough, you do have the ability to get yourself, now this is a 30 amp extension cord, for those of you that have 50 amp, you'd have to get a 50 amp cord. So you do have access to get extension cords on that. So on this particular one, the cord comes out the back and I'm able to plug that in because we're right back here. Now let's talk about, once you make sure that you're able to connect there, let's talk about the next thing. So you're in place, you've, you've, you're in the right area as far as to hook up your water, your sewer, your electric. Now before you disconnect, you've got to make sure that your um, tires are chalked. Now if you're using this type of a chalk, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put one on either side and you're going to put them up underneath the tire. Now once you put them on the tire, what you want to do is you want to back up hard against these. And the reason for that is these tires are hot and so they expand. And that way there, once you back up hard against it, then you're going to put ones in front of your tires on both sides. And that way there, that will keep you from moving back and forth. I personally don't uh, like these kind of chalks. I like the ones that would go in between. It's an X chalk that goes in between the tires and comes out against the tires. Now, when you, if you do use the X chalks, be sure that you do not over tighten them. But also understand that once the tires cool down, you're going to need to re-tighten them. So now you're, you're chalked, you're level side to side, you're able to, you know, your connections are, so now what you need to do is disconnect from your tow vehicle and you're going to level front to back using your tongue jack. So the next thing you're going to want to do um, after you have it level front to back is you're going to want to go ahead and put the stabilizers down. Now keep in mind that they are stabilizers. For those of you that have the fifth wheels with the or some of the travel trailers that have the automatic leveling, that's a different story. But this type of um, is just a stabilizer. Now most of you are going to have something that look like this uh, to put them down, and you're going to need those. But basically, if you want to make life easier for you, go ahead and buy yourself an adapter like this. This is a three-quarter inch socket, and of course, use a uh, power uh, screw gun. Now make sure that if you're using a power screw gun that you are um, not using the impact ones. You want to just use a regular one. Now this is not going to be able to um, put it down as hard as it wants to go, but at least do the most of the job. The other thing to save you from putting it down um, all the way is to get yourself some six by sixes. So get yourself something about, about a foot long and you want to go ahead and put these under each of your stabilizers. And I also recommend putting one of these under your tongue jack and that just helps um, if it's soft, uh, whatever, dirt, gravel, whatever you're putting, uh, putting your stuff down on, it just helps with the base. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this up underneath here. So you put it up underneath here like such and then you're just going to bring this thing down. You can see how much easier it comes down. 
Now once it hits here, what you're able to do, if your screw gun won't turn it enough, you can go ahead and turn this two or three turns. You can put a little bit of weight on it. You just can't put a lot of weight on it. So now you're all set. You just do that on all four and you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so you're backed into your parking spot. You know that you're able to hook up. You got yourself level side to side. You're gonna to wanna to hook up your sewer hose and put that in the ground. Keep in mind that you wanna leave these valves closed. Those are only used at the end of your camping trip to empty your tanks. Also, if you brought a cable connection, so you wanna watch cable, if you have cable connection, that's when you'd hook it up here as well. And then the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hook up your water. Now, when you're hooking up your water, let me explain to you what you wanna do there. Okay, so the spigot at your campsite, the way you want to hook up to that, it's very simple. Take your water pressure regulator, you want to connect that to here first. The next thing when you're going to connect to the water pressure regulator is going to be your inline water filter. And by the way, I'm going to have a link for all this stuff down below for more information on that. Any questions, by all, by all means, just uh, shoot me a comment. I'd be more than happy to try to answer your questions. So you're going to hook your water pressure regulator your inline water filter, then you connect your hose to that filter and then run that to your camper. On the camper, I recommend that you connect an L bracket, it's an L coupler, not a bracket, L coupler, and hook your hose to that. And you will find that things will work much, much better for you. Now the last thing to do um, as far as getting ready to go inside is to go ahead and open your LP bottles. Now I have a video that talks about how these automatic switch over uh, on the LP tanks works. So check that out, I'll have that link below. You wanna make sure that you open the tank that it is pointing to first. So open that one slowly and then open the other tank. Now let's go ahead and show you the rest. So now we're just about ready to go inside and get ready, but what you wanna do is, if you have an awning mat, put that down under the awning and then we're gonna show you how this awning, how this awning works. And most of them are gonna work very similar. So I'm gonna show you how, this is a real hard one, you gotta push a button. Now some of you are going to have the LED light strips, they'll be either on the, on the RV itself or they'll be out on the pole after you put it all the way out. Make sure that if you are using, if you are using the LED lights, if they're up against the wall here, make sure you pull that out just ever so slightly to give it some air. If it's on the tube, make sure it's all the way out so you can actually see that. Now. The next thing you're going to want to do is adjust how your uh, awning is uh, falling here. Now this particular one does have a little bit of slope on it. Now what you want to make sure you do when you're, when you're pulling the slope, make sure you're checking where your door is. You don't want your door rubbing on the awning. So check on that. So what you have on this particular one is you have this, you loosen this and it's just going to pull down a little bit. Keep it, off the, keep it off the door, and then what you do is you go on the back side, and so that's rubbing just a little bit, so I would just go ahead and loosen this a little bit, pull it up, make sure that I'm off it enough, so that's good. Now what happens is, because of the slope of the awning, let me go ahead and show you what kind of slope we've just done there. So as you can see, the slope of the awning, all the water would be running off to the back side of your camping area. You don't have to put it down this drastic. Something else I'd highly recommend you do with these electric awnings is put them away when you're not using them. But if you want to leave them out, I highly recommend you get some type of system to tie these things down, stake them in the ground. You need to have something. You, the last thing you want to do is have a windstorm come through and just take this awning and throw it on the roof. That just makes for a bad day. So now let's go inside and show you what we got to do. So now that you've come inside, you're going to want to put your slide out if you have a slide. But the next thing you want to do, if you did not travel down the road with the propane on, with the refrigerator running, what you're going to want to do is light the burners on your cooktop. Now for those of you that were uh, following the video last week, I had you running with the refrigerator down the road on propane, but just in case you're one that does not, it's okay and I'll talk about that in a moment. You want to light the burners. 
because the lines on the LP are going to be full of air and so it's going to take a little bit. Now you, most of you will have a striker on your uh, stove top for you to do it but sometimes that takes forever to bleed through so I highly recommend you have one of these uh, trusty little lighters and start in the back when you're lighting this and you just light them, light all three burners and that way there now you know that you have bled the LP lines up until this point at least. Now for those of you that have an outside kitchen or an outside grill which this one does have an outside connection board that would even be a better place for you to go ahead and uh, bleed the system through because that would be past your refrigerator it's going to be past the furniture and so uh, the furnace and so forth the water heater so now you've lit those you're good to go you're ready your lines are ready to use for those of you that didn't drive down the road with this thing in the auto mode at this point you can turn it on and it's going to automatically go to electric for those of you who do not want to drive down the road, keep in mind that will last about two hours if in fact you did the, the process that I talk about, talked about last week and cooling that down for a couple days prior to you leaving and not opening it after you fill it on that Thursday, the day before you leave to go camping. So that's how that works. Um, again, as a reminder, always light these burners prior to using any LP appliance, meaning your, if you want your oven, because it makes it easier for your oven, for your refrigerator, water heater, if you have LP on your water heater, and or your furnace. Okay, so another thing you need to do on the inside is you want to make sure that before you turn your water heater on, especially if you have an electric side of the water heater, you want to make sure that it is full of water. So what you want to do when you come in, you've hooked up the water, or if you're dry camping and you have your fresh tank full, of water you're going to want to have to open your spigot and you're going to open the hot side of the spigot and you want to make sure that it runs like you just saw it here initially uh, when you go to do this and there's no water in the in the water heater what will happen is this will spit and sputter but once it's running consistently then you know your water heater is full at that point then you can turn it on and for those of you that are camping You've already paid for the electric, so go ahead, at a campground that is, plug, you're plugged into electric, turn the electric side of the water heater on first, and then those of you that have both gas and electric on your water heater, when you're getting ready to take multiple showers, go ahead and turn on the propane side as well. What that'll do for you, those of you that have the suburban water heater, That'll give you a little over 16 gallons of hot water an hour. Those of you that have the Atwood water heater, that will give you close to 18 gallons an hour. Now I know there's some of you that have uh, Truma and some other ones, but again, make sure that you have water in the, those tanks. Oh, and one other thing I did not cover when you're plugging in outside, be sure that you use a surge protector. Now the surge protector that I recommend is an EMS by Progressive Industries. And you know, so if you're a 30 amp, get a 30 amp EMS. If you're 50 amp, you get a 50. Now, for those of you that don't want to have the portable ones, they do make those in a um, where they'll be hardwired into your unit, um, less chance of them walking off. However, there are ways you can lock that portable one up, and be sure to use it. Even if you're plugging in at home, be sure that you use your surge protector. Uh, I'll have those links down below as well. So um, let's go on to the next thing. Okay, ladies, so, ladies and gentlemen, the last thing we need to do is prime your black tank, get that ready for you to use uh, before you start using it while you're camping. And that you're going to want to use chemical. Now there's two different types of chemical, and I'll have this stuff listed below as well. This is the one that typically comes when you buy a new camper. The one I recommend is Pure Power. Um, the difference is, is one's a killer, kills the bacteria, the other one's a feeder, feeds the bacteria. They accomplish the same thing just using different uh, ways of doing it. Now when you have a killer that means it's a poison. So for those of you that have uh, children or pets, may not be something you want to use. It's also twice as expensive as using one that is a feeder. What you want to do is this is the Aquachem. You'd need to hold, use this whole bottle for this 40, ounce, uh, 40 gallon tank. Whereas with the Pure Power, two ounces will do you. So what you want to do first is uh, you're going to be hooked up to the water. You're going to fill up 
that your bowl in your toilet, fill it up about halfway, and then you're going to dump it and it's going to go into your tank. You'll fill it up a, a second time, dump your chemical in, dump it into your tank, fill it up a third time, and dump that in your tank. Now your black tank is primed, as I call it, it's ready for use. Always keep a little bit of water in the bottom of your toilet. That does two things for you. Keeps the seals from getting hard and it keeps odors from coming back up. So let's, at this point, you're absolutely ready to use this camper. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that was a little helpful information for you for getting your camper set up when you get to the campground. Uh, by all means, use that to go ahead and make a list for yourself for when you go camping, because obviously some things may be a little bit different on your particular camper. But I do appreciate you watching. And as I had mentioned earlier today, we have a giveaway. Now this giveaway here, this is by Mason Dixon Hydro Dipping. Uh, both Jeff and uh, Brian, they were so kind to donate this little koozie. Now, because this koozie is empty, as you can see, I'm also including a $25 gift card so that way there you can get the beverage of your choice to use this koozie in. This would be a great addition to your camping accessories. Uh, for more information I'm gonna have on, as far as for the Mason Dixon Hydro Dipping, I will have their link uh, to their Facebook page down below. Uh, but I appreciate you watching. If there's a particular topic that you would like me to cover uh, or a particular product that you would like me to uh, go ahead and look at, by all means, just hit me up and we can see what we can work out. And by the way, for this drawing, there are three things that you need to do. One, you need to like the video, you need to share the video, and you need to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be selecting on my next video for next week. So the cutoff is gonna be uh, six o'clock next Saturday. That'll be Saturday the 28th uh, of April and I will be selecting that and announcing that in my next video next week and then we'll figure out a way to go ahead and get this stuff mailed out to you. So appreciate you watching and we'll be coming back at you again next week. Take care.